when I'm in a supermarket or a shopping center, I get a kind of information overload. There's too much going on to be able to take it all in. A couple of times it has even distracted me from where I'm going and I've walked into something or someone. I think that we are bombarded with so much information it's impossible to take it all in. The same thing can happen when we read a book or watch a movie. How many times do we say, oh, I never noticed that before, when we watch a movie for the second time? Very few of us have photographic memories. I've read the Bible from cover to cover three times and I know that I haven't been able to retain all of it. I took a lot of notes but I missed something which Thomas Paine brought to my attention. I was recently reading his excellent Age of Reason and he pointed out a Bible contradiction which no biblical literalist should be able to ignore or explain away. For those who don't already know, the Bible contains many duplicates of the same stories, the most obvious being the four Gospel accounts of the life of Jesus. Many believers don't take the trouble to compare these stories side by side, and many who do soon become unbelievers. The story I'm concerned with here is in the Old Testament and describes how King David was tempted to number Israel. Why conducting a census was a bad thing in those days, I have no idea. There are two accounts of this story, one in 2 Samuel chapter 24 and the other in 1 Chronicles chapter 21. The interesting thing is that in one story Satan is the tempter and in the other the one doing the tempting is God. Now, call me silly, but Christians always tell me that God is the good guy and Satan is the one who is treacherous and dishonest. Shouldn't it be easy to tell them apart from their actions? When I read that story, I don't recall thinking, hmm, that seems out of character, in either case. I must say, though, that I find a lot of the stories about God rather disturbing. He's portrayed as something of a tyrant, with a seemingly insatiable bloodlust and a foul temper. I cannot reconcile the idea that he's the good guy, especially with the books of Exodus and Joshua. The Satan character really only plays a cameo role in the Bible, and the number of people he kills is ten, for which he had to get God's permission, as described in the book of Job. Compare this with God's body count of nearly two and a half million humans, which incidentally doesn't include the unspecified numbers in the genocides attributed to Noah's flood, the fire and brimstone which rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah, and when he killed, when God killed all the firstborn of Egypt, after he hardened Pharaoh's heart. In my humble opinion, Richard Dawkins was right when he said, The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. <laughs> Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. For those who make the claim that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, let's return to the story of David's census. After God, or Satan, persuaded King David to do this apparently terrible thing, David commanded Joab to carry out the census, which he proceeded to do. On his return, he reported that the number of Israelite men was 800,000, according to 2 Samuel, but 1.1 million, according to 1 Chronicles. There's no mention of women, children, or slaves. And the total of Judah was 500,000, according to 2 Samuel, but 30,000 fewer, according to 1 Chronicles. According to both versions of the story, David regretted what he'd been tempted to do, and God, through his earthbound proxy, a guy called Gad the seer, gave David three choices of punishment. The first choice was seven years of famine, or three years, depending upon which inerrant story you go with. The second choice was three months of being destroyed by their enemies, 
and the third choice was three days of pestilence. In both stories, David left it to God to decide. God chose the pestilence option and killed 70,000 men. He massacred tens of thousands of David's people for what David had done. This isn't the only part of the Bible where the punishment is administered to someone other than the perpetrator of the crime, which reinforces the biblical idea that we're not necessarily responsible for our actions. Other people are. According to both versions of the story, God, the omnibenevolent creator of the universe, decided to repent of his wickedness before his angel destroyed Jerusalem. But he deemed it necessary that David made a sacrificial burnt offering to him on the threshing floor of a Jebusite called Arona, according to 2 Samuel, but his name is Ornan, according to 1 Chronicles. David bought the threshing floor and the unfortunate sacrificial cattle from Ornan, or was it Arona, for 50 shekels of silver. But, oh wait, it cost him 12 times as much in gold in the other version of the story. So, to all those biblical literalists out there, the idea that the Bible is the inerrant word of God is ridiculous. It's far from inerrant, which itself casts a huge shadow of doubt on the claim that it was authored or inspired by the alleged creator of the universe. It seems much more likely that these Bible stories were passed on by word of mouth until different men decided to write them down. If they weren't sure about the details, they just made them up.